We get started. The, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, tonight we have a uh, special guest. Uh, we have Ed Tiedemann back here. I've uh, dove with Ed, I guess, about 35 years or so. I was thinking about it before. And um, I met him when I was going to college at Hofstra. And I got certified down there. I became a scuba instructor. And um, uh, I do teaching with Ed. I'm currently doing a crossover to another organization from the original one I got certified with. And uh, I'm one of the two, as far as I know, at Bird Badge Council for SCUBA in our district. Uh, Mary Davis back here is you're from Troop 96. Troop 96. From Troop 96, we're both um, SCUBA Diving Bird Badge Counselors. And Ed is going to give a um, presentation on SCUBA Diving that we can all do with our troops if you like. And Ed is, uh, I think, runs one of the best uh, SCUBA classes uh, around. I've seen some of the other ones. And, I think he's the most comprehensive and and I think exemplifies what we try to do with scouting, which is safety, among other things. And go ahead. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. First, I would like to good evening. first I would like to thank you for uh, giving me some of your time. I know how precious that can be. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to give you a little bit of education as to how scuba diving works and see if it might fit in with what you would like to do with your people. Basically, scuba is not the daredevil activity that most people think it is. It's actually, when done correctly, an incredibly safe and comfortable sport that can be done by anyone who loves the water. The misconception about diving comes about primarily because it does have a certain adventure feel, and people in the movies, people in TV, they're the kind of people who love to hype that up, usually just before the commercial comes. So let me tell you what SCUBA is all about. First, it's about education. SCUBA is very big on education. In order to become a SCUBA diver, you have to take and go through a series of rather extensive textbook, about 260, 70 pages of information. You have to take a national final. You have to get 80 on the final, so it has some pretty high standards in that area. And you have to develop a knowledge of not just the equipment, not just the marine environment, but also some physics and some physiology. As the person who's becoming a diver develops this knowledge, what they're doing is they're really challenging themselves. And I think that's one of the great parts about diving. It really is a bit of a challenge for people. While we are doing that education, while they are developing this knowledge that's necessary to be a safe diver, at the same time, we're working on what we call scuba skills. They go into the pool, they're given a set of scuba equipment, they learn how to set it up, they learn how to break it down, and they also are going to learn how to take care of it. Then, in the water, with instructors in relatively small groups, usually about two to four people, they are going to be taught the skills that are necessary to be a safe diver. Very often when I talk to people about scuba diving, they ask me to break it down, and I often say it's the easiest way to break it down is in three steps. The first two steps are going to be the academics, which I just mentioned, and then the pool work. That's what we usually call a scuba class or scuba lessons. In the water work, they are going to work their way through a series of skills to become a safe, comfortable, and competent diver. These skills are not too complicated, they're not that challenging, and pretty much anyone over the age of 10 who's comfortable in the water is able to handle it. Once again, they have to be comfortable in the water. You do not take scuba lessons to become comfortable in the water. You take swimming lessons to become comfortable. Then you come see me about scuba. I've been teaching scuba for quite a while, as Rich mentioned, Hofstra. Hofstra has been our kind of our, the heart of our program for the last 40 years or so. And basically, the pool over there lends itself to scuba training. It's 15 feet deep, Olympic-sized swimming pool. And on Saturdays, we have our program over there the program that allows us to do those scuba sessions, those skill sessions I just mentioned. So as a person decides they want to become a diver, they would then sign up for classes, they would do the academic work, and they would do the pool work. Now, as they work their way through all of this information and all these skills, they're becoming very comfortable and competent, but they're not ready to go diving because they only know how to dive in a swimming pool. And diving in a swimming pool is a lot of fun, but obviously, we want to go diving where all the fish are, where all the wrecks are, where all the adventure is. 
So that is the third step. And that's the way to explain it when people ask you about the program. You can have parents ask, you can have kids ask. It's a three-step process. The first two steps are going to be the academic work and the pool work. The third step is called the open water dives. In order to receive their certification, and that is their license to go scuba diving, people are getting certified, have to complete all three steps. The open water dives are four dives, and they're done over two days. So it's not something you can just do in one day. It's usually a weekend activity. The open water dives can be done a number of different places. It's not just saying, oh, well, I've started out over at Tiedemann's, so therefore I have to dive locally, and you may not, they may not be interested in that. They can actually do the open water dives pretty much anywhere in the world, because once they finish the first two steps with us, we can give them a referral that they can use, like I said, pretty much anywhere in the world. I've had people go to Australia to get certified. I've had people go to Hawaii. I've had people just go to Florida, wherever it works for them. Now, this referral system has helped to make the sport really open up to people who perhaps weren't interested in diving in local conditions, like diving locally with us. We do do the four dives over two days during the summer months, starting in April and going through until October, and so people could sign up with us and get certified in that manner by doing the pool lecture work with us and then going on to the third step. The overall cost in that, if they were to sign up directly through the shop, would be about $500 in education. So the educational part, the open water weekend, and so forth and so on, is about $500. Actually, the scuba lessons are $250. The open water dives are $250 also. The only other expense would be the student kit. That's the textbook, the logbook, the workbook, everything that they would need for the academics, plus a logbook, which they need when they get certified. So that's roughly the cost for someone to become certified. Now that's a pretty big commitment for a parent to make the decision like, oh wow, I'm going to spend this kind of money and perhaps my son is going to be interested in it and so forth and so on. So what we have done for many, many years is we have developed what we call the Tri-Scuba Program. Now the Tri-Scuba Program is very reasonably priced, it's $35 per person, and it's designed around having the boys, and hopefully their parents, because it's a big, it's a big parent thing, I'll, I'll explain that in a moment, come down to Hofstra University on a Saturday afternoon, we put them in a set of scuba gear, we put them with some excellent instructors, like Rich, like Mary, and we let them have some fun. It really is just a fun session to see if they really are that interested. These little tri-scuba programs have been run successfully for, I don't know, since I've been in business, the last 30 years or so. When a person comes to this, they're given the chance to try scuba without getting too complicated, without spending a lot of money. They don't have to buy any gear, they just have to come with a bathing suit, a towel. And of course, there are certain things that have to be done beforehand, like paperwork and medical <coughs> reviews and so forth and so on. Not necessarily by a doctor, unless there's a medical issue. We can do this for any boy from the age of 10 all the way up. And what I recommend you consider, because I just did this with the Garden City group that worked out really well, is consider the parents being brought in on this. And I do mean parents who may not be active in the troop, but just parents in general. This is one of the great activities that a boy can do with their parents. And I say parents because it can be their mother also, and they can enjoy it. Mary dies with her son and her daughter, and they just got certified. This type of activity works well with the parents simply because it's not really a competition. Now, unfortunately, I never had any kids growing up. Uh, it, it never worked out in, in my life. And I really don't have anybody to relate to except my niece, who's my closest thing to a daughter that I have. She and I used to play tennis all the time. And she, we were evenly matched. It was a good match. Nowadays, at my age, and I'm turning 66 this year, no way. No way in the world. But you know what? We can still go diving together. She's over in China. As soon as she comes back, we're going to go plan a dive trip together. And that is one of the great things about diving. I have set up trips literally for three generations. I remember certifying Grandma and Grandpa. I certified him on Long Island. Then their son moved off to Texas, where he met his wife. And she got certified in Texas. And they had their little boy. And one summer, I got the ultimate compliment when Grandpa brought the son in and said, you have to certify my son, he's here for a month, let's get him certified. I certified him and now all three generations go diving together. 
And that's one of the interesting things about diving. It doesn't have to be this big, involved, complicated, big double tanks, deep diving, cave diving. It doesn't have to be that. It can be simply going down and looking at the pretty fish. So that's why I, keep, I think I'm still so enthusiastic about diving. I've always found it. It really is a very much a people sport, even though it sounds like a, almost like a solo activity, just you and your buddy. But you go away in groups, and you have, you know, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it that really is very beneficial for the boys. So if you think that that might be something that you are interested in, and you think you might like to work with us, I have some contact sheets. If you give me your email, as you leave tonight, I'll put them over there. If you give me your email, I'll send you information about both the Tri Scuba and also about our full scuba class. Now, if somebody comes down and takes the Tri Scuba and they pay the 35 bucks, I will take that 35 bucks off of the 250 so they don't lose any money in doing the Tri Scuba and they get the experience. And then when they move on to do the classes, it'll be that much cheaper for them. The classes that I have set up on Saturday are extremely flexible because there are so many activities going on, the way we've set up the classes. Now, first of all, we start out with the academics. Everyone signing up for the class, now this is for the full class, will receive a home study kit. This is nothing generic that was put on the internet. This is something that I made up personally. They work with their computer, there's video, there's audio that I made up, and they work their way through the material. In conjunction with that home study kit, I do academic review sessions at my shop in Levittown on Thursday evenings. They are invited to come to those academic review sessions. In the case of the Garden City group, because they were all in one troop and they all were half together, I did it at a parent's house. And I can do those academic re review sessions for you as a group if you want to. Or they can come independently. I run them once a month. I always have the academic review sessions going on. When somebody comes in to sign up for my class, they literally make their own schedule. Because first, they don't have to come to the academic review sessions. If they're really good academically, they can do it all through home study, but they're there if they want them. Second, when it comes to the pool sessions, the way the pool sessions are set up, they, all the skills that are necessary to become a diver are broken down into three pool skill sets. All right, So each session has a set of skills that we have to go through. A person comes down. they just starting, they will do the first pool set. We will go through all these skills. If they feel comfortable, they'll move on to the second one. If they don't feel comfortable, they can come back and repeat it. There's no extra charge. As they finish each skill set, they move on to the next one. When I set up my schedule, when I hire the instructors to work with me on Saturday, I will find out who's coming to a session. If I have one person coming to skill number two, I will have an instructor for that person. I'll hire someone. Usually the groups stay together, so there's usually about two to four people. We try to keep the classes very, very small. We don't really want, we don't like the idea of too big a group. If I get more than four people, I'll hire a second instructor to do that particular skill set. What this means to the individual is tremendous flexibility. Now, of course, if you come as a group, you want to stay as a group, but what if some Saturday is some activity going on? And you say, oh, I really want to go to that activity. It's not, three necessar it's not necessarily three Saturdays in a row. You can make up the schedule, whatever works for you. When I send you the email, I will give you all the dates until the end of August that we're going to be over at Hofstra University doing the tri for the tri scuba or for taking classes, if that's what, the, uh, what you might be interested in. Every so often, we are going to do the open water dives, and those are going to be done in the warmer months, starting in April. And what we try to do is the last weekend of the month. So that means the end of April, we're going to go up, we're going to do the four dives for people who are in the classes right now so they can get certified. A lot of my college students, because I teach at Hofstra University as well as at CW Post and at Farmingdale University, are interested in getting certified in April because they're going to go home for the summer and they want to be able to dive when they go home. Then we're going to do one in May. Now we're not going to do the last weekend because of Memorial Day, so the weekend before. We're going to do June, we're going to do July, we're going to do August, then we're going to do one in September and October. So we have six opportunities, seven opportunities, I believe, seven weekends that we can do the open water dives. One thing I will tell you about the open water dives, because we do it at an underwater park rather than locally, it's a pretty nice place. I'll give you a link when I send you the email. This place is called Dutch Springs. If you know any dive friends, they probably have told you about it. 
It's basically an old stone quarry in which they have literally set it up like an underwater Disneyland. You have attractions to go to. There's a Sikorsky helicopter you can swim around. There's little shipwrecks. There's a fire truck. And this just adds to the excitement of going on the dives. So it's not just going down and doing mass clearing in front of Ed. It's going down, doing mass clearing, because they have to do the skills in open water, but then having a chance to do real dives. Like a big aquarium. Yeah, like a big aquarium. Now, we don't take them in the water to do what's called a checkout dive. If you talk to other people about getting certified, they'll say, oh, yeah, it's really easy. You come Saturday morning, we'll take you down to the Rockaways. You'll go underwater, and, you know, 15 minutes, we'll get you through. No, we take you diving. We want you to get turned on to diving. That's how I think I kept my business going all these years. So they finish Dutch Springs weekend. They get their permanent certification card. That card is good for the rest of their life. All right? I was certified when I was 16. I'd still have my card, but it was made out of stone, and I dropped it. And <laughs> that was it. This certification card is issued for life because we empower you person who's getting certified with the ability to keep your card current by using a log system. It's an honor system, so it works perfectly for you guys, and it's based on the idea that every time you go diving, we only ask you to do one thing, log the dive. Have your buddy sign it if you're doing the dive with me or with Mary as a dive manager or instructor, have them sign it off just to show that you're participating in the sport. It's like when you fly, you got to log your hours. Right, exactly. The same right. exact idea. But here, there's no check right every couple of years. It's just, that's it. As long as you're logging dives and you're diving at least once a year, we're going to continue to give you the privilege of being a certified diver. So basically, I think we put together, and I, when I say we, I mean the editorial we. I'm talking about the certifying organizations, the, the industry in general. I think we put together a very safe program that's suitable for anybody who likes the water. Anybody who loves the water, this is so natural. Um, it's, it's simple, it's straightforward, it's a three-step process, as I mentioned before. And for anybody who's interested in doing it, it really is just a matter of looking at the schedule, saying to yourself, okay, this is what I want to do, look at the budget, of course, and so forth. And if you want to put a few guys together for a try scuba, the only thing is, I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm working with a bunch of other, so I can only take about a half a dozen boys in each Saturday pool session. So, you know, if your troop has a lot of kids, they want to do it, it it's something you have to kind of plan ahead, and we have to work together on that. Uh, what I did with the Garden City Group last year, we were doing it this time of year, we were doing the tri scuba, and everybody liked it, and they said, oh, this is good, this is good, so forth and so on. And then later on, they signed up for the regular scuba lessons, and then from there, we got them certified, I believe, the last weekend in August. And in December, they all went down to Sea Camp, right? Sea Base. Sea Base. I got it wrong. I keep saying Sea Camp. They went down to Sea Base during Christmas week. They were all excited. I'm trying to put together a little article about it. They gave me pictures, but I haven't had a chance to write. So they went down to Sea Base already certified. They, yes, they wanted to be certified when they went down. That's a big difference with Sea Base focus programs to yes. go down there and get certified. And get certified, but then that takes your entire time. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So they were able to do a lot of diving. They were very happy. Very very happy. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's it's very straightforward. It's very simple. One thing I will tell you about younger boys, uh, uh, like I said, age, age is 10, but the reality is if someone is under 100 pounds, they may have some issues with the equipment. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head if you're talking to younger folks about this because that was one thing that we kind of ran into. Um, in terms of upper limits, there really isn't any uh, as far as I'm concerned. The, everyone has to fill out a medical questionnaire. Uh, last year we had somebody who was older than me, if there are such people out there, and he did great. And now he's diving with his daughter, I believe. She had taken my class prior to that. So usually it's the parents bring the daughter. Well, this was just the reverse. As a matter of fact, I'm starting uh, this Friday. It was this, uh, this Thursday I'm starting. A uh, young lady, she was 12 years old, got certified with me last year. She talked her dad into it. So he's going to join us and start this Saturday. Nice thing about our program is it does have a lot of flexibility in starting. Yeah, somebody can walk into my shop between now and Friday night, and I can get them started on Saturday as long as they're ready and they can, uh, you know, can schedule everything appropriately. That's it. It's a simple, it's a simple way of doing things, and it seems to work well because everybody is so busy nowadays. I'm oh, sorry. Did you say you also do uh, in the winter time too? Yes, we the pool sessions are year round. What would happen in the winter time if you did something, let's say, in the late fall, and you wanted to go to see? Uh, Sea base and get certified down there. 
uh, you could take that referral that I mentioned. So you could do the first two steps with me and then do the third step with them down there. Right. I know they do take the referrals mm -hmm. that we have. Now, as I said, I'll put my contact, uh, just says Tiedemann's Diving Center on it and contact information. If you give me the information, I'll promise over the next couple of days to send everything out, but I'm gonna answer questions in just a couple of seconds. Can I ask one quick question? Is anybody here certified? Cool. How about certifiable? Certifiable, that's, that's, that's another category. Not all right, you've done. All right. All right. Well, the reason I ask about that is I, are you still active? No. Okay. So, so, okay, well, listen, life happens. You know, I, I used to be a pilot, and I enjoyed that more than, well, not more than my diving, but I loved it, and life happened, and I haven't flown in 30 years, and I'm kind of disappointed, and I've always thought about it. But to this age, I don't know if I'll ever go back. But anyway, the reason I mention that is there's also something else that we do. It's called a scuba update. If you haven't been out of it too long, it is possible to take someone and bring them back up to the point where they can start participating in the sport again through something called a scuba update. When I, add, when I email you the information about classes, if that's something that applies to you, just send it back. I don't want to overwhelm you with the email. Just send back that you're interested in the scuba updates because that is something that we can do for you. And for those of you that are certified and still active, we have something even cooler than that, I think, and that's called the scuba alumni sessions over at Hofstra. Now, I've been at Hofstra a long, long time. And one of the things that I hope will always be there is going to be an opportunity for scuba divers who are certified, people who have their license, to just get in the water and practice their art just to make sure they're current, make sure their gear is working properly, work on skills, work with a new buddy, whatever it might be. So I've worked it out with Hofstra that people can come to the pool sessions, as long as we have room, there is a limitation on room, obviously, and they can get into the water, and it only costs like 30 bucks. If you have all your gear, you come to the pool, you pay $30, it goes to the school to cover the fees and so forth and so on, and you can get in the water and play around for a couple of hours on a Saturday afternoon. The pool is huge, so we have students over here, we have alumni in the deep end, it really does work out quite nicely. If you don't have your gear, or your gear is so old you're not sure you want to use it again, it only costs, four, uh, it only costs $45, $15 more, and I'll bring a set of gear for you to play around with. So that's possible for the people that are certified also. All right, I'm done with my speech. Can I answer any questions for anyone? Come on, somebody <laughs> must have a question. All right. Is this under uh, Patty? This is done, okay. There is, uh, the question for those of you that are not certified is, is this done under the auspices of PADI? This is done actually under the auspices of SSI. So what's PADI? Is that an I'm going to explain all of that. PADI is the Professional Association of Dive Instructors. Now he is the National Association of Underwater Instructors. SSI is Scuba Schools International. NASDS is the National Association of Stin Diving Schools and there's about 10 more in the United States. People don't realize that because PADI is so big and so overwhelming. I'm a PADI, NAWI, NASDS, SSI instructor trainer. I've been with all the agencies. Unfortunately, in order to become biggest, which PADI is, their standards had to be a little compromised. My standards have never been compromised, so that's why I've aligned myself with SSI. I consider it the highest standards in the world, and that's why I use it. It is internationally recognized. Actually, we, we're pretty sure that, because these are privately held corporations and everything, we're pretty sure SSI is bigger overseas than PADI is. So any place in the world you're going to go has a, carries a lot of prestige. And there's actually a link in my email that talks a little bit about that. It's an excellent question. Because a lot of people are convinced that, well, when I get certified, I have to be a PADI diver, right? No. no not at all. Okay, I think you had the next So if we are PADI certified... It doesn't matter to me. I'm PADI certified too. Okay, but I'm just saying... <laughs> I'm so you go and let's say recertify. So unfortunately, well, unfortunately, and ironically, um, all my dive stuff, my logbook, everything I had together was in a box under three feet of water and sandy, and <coughs> so I have nothing left. Well, we can, we can. I'm still very active with Patty. I can still help you get some of your credentials back. How long since you've been in the water? I got certified in '91. I haven't been in the water probably since 2000. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, now you're going over 10 years, then they got, they probably at that point would like to see you redo the program, at least the pool and the lecture work, theoretically, mm -hmm. so make sure you're current on all that kind of stuff, but uh, it, what happens is, we don't really care about your religion, so to speak, on this, 
So I have PADI divers, NASDI divers coming to the alumni center, as long as they're certified by a nationally recognized certification. I have some that even come with British Sub Aqua Club certification from Britain. All of those are recognized by the school. I set it up with the school. As long as they're, it's a national organization, they can come in and anything like that. Now we, you know, we, we talk about the open water class. We're talking about how you get certified. But there's a lot going on at Tiedemann's beyond that. And this is for the people that are certified, or even for the boys later on if they want more challenges. We teach everything all the way up to instructor. So that means someone who starts out in an open water class can become an instructor with us if they wanted to. And along the way, we teach all kinds of interesting specialties. Specialties are where you take a topic that is of interest to people and you go a little bit more into it. You know, now you're going to learn a little bit about navigation when you take the open water class, the beginnings class. But we go into, in the navigation course, some really fine points on navigation. We have a navigation course, a night diving class, a rec class, which is very popular here on Long Island. We have search and recovery. We have stress rescue course. We have, oh, there's so many of them. Uh, they go on and on and on and on. Wait, wait. Oh, underwater photography, thank you. Underwater video photography. Uh, diver propulsion vehicle. I have a, a collection, a collection, that's a bad word. I have a, a group of instructors that I'm very privileged to work with, my wife, myself, and there's about 13 of us all work together to really create a very, very extensive program with all kinds of little specialties. When you go to Dutch Springs, if you get certified in Dutch Springs, you will see people getting certified. The majority of them are going to be open water divers. But you're going to see also people doing night dives. You're going to see people doing wreck dives. There are going to be all kinds of things that they can do over the course. Diver propulsional vehicles. Is it one of those James Bond things? You <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, we teach wow. a course on how to fly. That's cool. okay. yeah, very cool. Uh, question on the merit badge. Since you two are merit badge well, counselors. He, he, usually I just turn it over to him to sign on. Uh, so. Yeah, they'll, meet with, they'll meet with you first, obviously? No, they, they, they all they need to do, uh, the requirements for the Barrett badge are they need to be certified and they need to do the work. So, so they so need to get a C card to, to earn the Merit yeah. badge? So the, the ones that I've, that I've given the Merit badge to have already gone through the program. They've taken, they've taken the certification. They, they have a, a, a card. They've been certified by one of the organizations. And they've done the additional requirements. I think there's like five requirements that they need to do. So doing the Discover Scuba is not sufficient. To no, no. The, the Discover America. Scuba, the Try Scuba first. is just to see if they're interested yeah. in going and pursuing it. There is a uh, Scuba BSA patch that they can get. Though. There's a snorkel patch. I didn't know there was a Scuba there, patch. There's a Scuba BSA patch that they can get. Yeah, I know. For with the sea base, we've got a snorkeling one. So I think it's, it's a Scuba one. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Great. A couple questions? I really like questions. I'm very good with questions. Yes, sir. If I may go back to the merit badge issue mm -hmm. from the staff. If I, if, if I have a, by the way, I'm going to bring the news to my troop this way. They will hear what you just said to us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, I just want to keep it just, keep it simple, stupid, whatever. This, <laughs> this case. Uh, would they need to take classes at Hofstra if just to get the merit badge? Or well, to get the merit badge, you need to get certified first. <coughs> Meaning I have to so, go to him? Yes. You yeah, need to go to a, a certifying organization, period. Is that a big part of the badge? That's the first That's the first. Yeah, for the merit the badge. badge, you have to have certification. So they'd have to get certified through me, or if they went away, got certified, or something else like that. But they have to have the card that credential, and then they can apply for the merit. And my next question is the course structure. If I take my kids to go to your uh, facility at Hofstra. Okay, the basic classes are broken down 250 for the first two steps, the pool work and the lecture work that they would do here on Long Island, and then 250 for the open water dives, which would be done at Dutch Springs, which is located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I'm sorry I didn't mention that. So it's a, it's a weekend, you know, you go away. Yeah, and then there there'd be other expenses like <laughs> camping over there cost $10 and stuff like that. But, you know, that would be the educational uh, funds that would go to me. And then there is a student kit, which is 80 bucks. So it's about 580 to get certified in terms of instruction. And then, of course, they're going to want some of their own gear, especially personalized gear like mass fitness, well, which you may have already. But that's, that's the basics overall. Uh, that includes the use of equipment to get started. They don't have to. They don't need any equipment. So uh, for the tri scuba, they just have to come with a bathing suit, a towel. I'll supply them with fins, mask, snorkel, 
plus the tanks and the regulators and the instructors to deal with it. And then, uh, you know, when they're getting certified, then it gets a little more personal. They probably want they, some of the basic gear like that. But I'll, like I said, I'll try to put everything in that email to make sure everybody knows exactly where the, where it stands. And the tri scuba is how, what's the length of time for which is it? Like uh, the time frame on tri scuba, you uh, get there at two thirty on Saturday afternoon. We, you'd be out of the building by six o'clock. Oh, so a few hours. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh no, it's it's a nice little. Well, there's there's some education involved. Sure. All right, so there's about an hour of these are the safety rules. This is what you got to do. And, and then they'll, they'll be, you, you know, you can't, and I'm going to bring wetsuits for them. Okay. So, uh, but the water's 81 degrees. But right. even after an hour or so, if most younger sure. people, because they don't have much adipose tissue right. on them, tend to get a little cool. So they're actually in the water for an hour to an hour and a half, depending on their tolerance. Oh, yeah, no, we want, we don't, we want them to have a good time. I'm sorry, question, sir. Actually, that was, that my was question it? No, the question of the hours. Cool. Maybe you answer this, but in the, for the Tri Scuba program, if we we're going to bring a group of boys, how many boys can you accommodate? I can do usually on an average six per Saturday. Okay. All right. So it, we'd have to coordinate it. I, I hate to use first come first serve basis, but you know I don't know any other way to schedule things. Okay. So if you can coordinate among yourselves, or if you have like somebody has three people interested, someone else may have three people. You can put them together that way. Uh, if if possible, if I know there's a big demand, I might see if I can hire more instructors, get more small gear. But part of the reason why I limit that is I want the gear to fit the boys properly. I don't want to stick, you know, because I have plenty of adult gear. Right now I have 22 students at Hofstra University. And, and you know, most of them are, are adults already. You know, they're, they're college students. So I have lots of gear in that respect. But I have a number of my students are smaller in stature and so forth and so on. And I have quite a bit of small, small gear. But I don't want to just say, oh, I'll take more boys, because I have plenty of instructors and everything, and put them in gear they're not going to be comfortable with. So usually about six. Uh, and if, I, if you could mix it up, like bring three small kids and three bigger kids, that makes it even better. So maybe I could take eight one day or something like that. So anyway, that's a good question. You need, you need to, excuse me, you need to know that advance this way. Oh, straight, yeah. Uh, if, if you say you have six people, the first thing I'm going to ask you is their height, their weight, their right. shoe size, okay. and their age, and, and start from there. Right. And, and, and work along, you know, work with you in that. Um, so that it's, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a good experience. It's supposed to come back and, and be something that's exciting and interesting. And, you know, I, I've been doing this for a long time. I still enjoy doing it. And I want it to be fun. I want it to be fun for us too. So that's why I'm very big on paperwork, if, if I can use that, because there's all kinds of forms to fill out. But I like to get all that stuff done so when we get to the pool, we can have a good time. If we get to the dives, we can have a good time. Good question. Any other questions? Like yeah, I said, I love it. Because I know some of the kids in my troop are going to ask. When they start off with that tri, yeah, the TRI program, I assume they're in water that they can stand in. Uh, well, what happens is Hofstra is rather an interesting configuration. Well, I, I swim there no, they can stand up. They can stand up, but here's what happens. They have a shallow end of the pool where you can stand up, and it gets a little deeper, then they have the center, and then they have the deep end. Now, we want to make this interesting, so we only have the deep end. We're not going to be in the shallow end. But being very, very inventive people, we have underwater platforms which deploy in that section that's about six feet deep, so the boys can stand up. They can get comfortable, and then we take them underwater when they're ready. Very nice. Yes, we had that all worked out. I don't even ask me that. So. Yeah, that's a good question. No. Well, you want you know, you know, you you want it to be something that they uh, they enjoy. So we made up these platforms, thanks to uh, Hostess Bread, I believe. They're they're actually PVC and bread platforms, and they just can stand on them. We put them together like that. Good question. Any other questions? Any questions at all? All right, see, tomorrow's my day off, so I'll stay as late as you want. Right. This, this is like my Friday night. I, as soon as I'm out of here, I get a day off, so I'm happy. Okay, guys, I will lay out my cards over here and the contact information, and I'll, ha I'll hang around to answer any of your questions. Also, guys, if you like the magazine, if you sign up on here, I can get you a free six-month subscription to the magazine. So just put your name down on here. I'll make believe you're in a class. And we'll get you a free six month subscription if you're interested. Don't have too many pens over here, so I'll need one.